Thank you to Marvel's Puzzle Quest for sponsoring today's episode. Could ice dragons mean the end of one of Game of Thrones' oldest fan theories? Now this is your warning to pull back on those reins if you haven't seen last night's episode, so... Spoiler warning! Last night's Game of Thrones episode was spent almost entirely beyond the wall and delivered all of the bitter cold we could handle, including ice zombies, ice zombie polar bears, ice zombie battles, and of course, Tormund's helpful advice about how to stay warm in icy climates. Walking's good, fighting's better, f***ing's best. But sadly, outside of Thoros of Mir, the only character who actually got in the cold last night was this poor fire-breathing bastard. <laughs> Tyrion, the dragon Danny named after her gold-plated big brother, got straight up iced by the Night King before getting dragged to shore and given a full White Walker makeover complete with a pair of baby blue contacts. Now the big question all of this raises is obviously, where in the hell did the White Walkers get those big ass chains? Is there a friggin' ace true value beyond the wall or something? But the second question it raises is, what do ice dragons mean for the rapidly approaching Game of Thrones endgame? Well, thanks to a couple of awesome articles courtesy of Nerdist's own Michael Walsh and Joanna Robinson over at Vanity Fair, we were able to learn a lot about the existence of ice dragons in George R. R. Martin's writing. And you might be surprised that he's been thinking about these fantastically frosty beasts since way back before his songs of ice and fire. Martin actually penned a children's book back in 1980 titled The Ice Dragon that told the tale of a young girl who befriended a friendly ice dragon that she used to fight off the evil fire dragons that were besieging her kingdom. Now, ice dragons would then appear again in Game of Thrones, but so far, only in passing references. Although Martin did expand upon them in his World of Ice and Fire encyclopedia, where he described them as many times larger than the dragons of Valyria, are said to be made of living ice, with eyes of pale blue crystal, and that instead of breathing flames, they breathe a chill so terrible that it can freeze a man solid in half a heartbeat. It'll be interesting to see if any of the ice dragon properties mentioned in Martin's writing end up on screen. After all, the zombified Viserion isn't exactly one of the pure-blood ice dragons from the books. He's really just a whiteified fire dragon. Still, we imagine we'll see some of those things end up in the show, cause come on, how are they gonna pass up a chance to a fire breath, ice breath showdown? But perhaps an even more interesting question is, how will this affect one of the longest standing Game of Thrones fan theories? Now the prophecy of the three-headed dragon has always been interpreted to mean that Danny's three babies would one day fly into battle, helmed by three remaining Targaryens. Danny being one, Jon Snow being the second, and Tyrion being the third secret member of the Targaryen dynasty. But with one dragon down, it seems like that prophecy has been put on ice. And it wouldn't be without precedent. You don't see it so much in the show, but in the books it's made pretty clear that a lot of times prophecies can be complete BS. So maybe this was one of them. Maybe the prophecy of the three-headed dragon was never actually going to come to pass. But then again, eh, maybe it still could. Now there are options that could keep Viserion in play for the good guys, or at least get him back on their side after the inevitable ice versus fire battle. Now in the extreme long shot department, warging is always on the table. Now, it's said that dragons can't be warged because they have intelligence akin to humans, but being dead for a while has to have knocked Viserion's IQ down a few points. Maybe that could give Bran an opening to invade his mind, take control, and allow one of the Targaryens to take the reins. Another option that some fans are speculating on is that Jon Snow will finally live up to his last name and reveal his secret ice powers. Or at the very least, maybe he has power over the dead that he doesn't know about yet. Now, the theory goes that his resurrection by Melisandre last season connected him with the dead in a way that he doesn't know about yet, and that mixed with his dragon blood is the perfect combination needed for taming an ice dragon. It would also help explain how he could stay under the frigid water for so dang long without drowning or freezing to death, but I just call that filling plot holes. You know what I mean? Because they're were a lot. But what do you folks think? Have we lost Viserion to the White Walkers for good, or will he return to the warm embrace of his Targaryen fam? Did you like this week's episode, or did it leave you feeling lukewarm? Let's discuss. And a very special thanks to Marvel Puzzle Quest for sponsoring today's episode. Marvel Puzzle Quest is the match three RPG game that lets you play alongside all of your favorite Marvel characters, including Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. You can battle in PvP and PvE events to win other newcomers to the game, like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Thanks, Puzzle Quest. <laughs>